Let's check out two visual proofs exposing the differences between a to the b and b to the a. Given two real numbers a and b, it's common to wonder when first learning about exponentials if a to the b or b to the a is the larger of the two numbers. For instance, here are a few examples of such comparisons. In the examples shown here, one strategy works for all but three of them. The common heuristic is to go with the larger exponent most of the time. Let's investigate two visual proofs that justify why the number with the larger exponent typically is the larger value. For our first visualization, imagine that we have two real numbers a and b with a greater than or equal to e and b greater than a. Then plot the graph of the function y equals the natural log of x as shown here. The number e is approximately 2.7 and we can plot points for a and b on the x-axis as shown here. The tangent line to the curve y equals natural log of x at x equals e passes through the origin. Because the function y equals the natural log of x is increasing and concave down on its domain, we know that the secant line connecting the origin to the point a natural log of a has a larger slope than the secant line connecting the origin to the point b natural log of b. So in this picture, this means that the secant line in red with slope ma has a larger slope than the secant line pictured in yellow with the slope mb, so ma is greater than mb. The slope ma is the natural log of a over a, and the slope mb is the natural log of b over b. Therefore, 1 over a times the natural log of a is greater than 1 over b times the natural log of b. Multiplying both sides by a times b shows us that b times the natural log of a is greater than a times the natural log of b. Applying logarithm rules shows us that the natural log of a to the b is greater than the natural log of b to the a. And then using the fact that the natural log is an increasing function, we deduce that a to the b is greater than b to the a. Therefore, in this picture, we've seen that if e is less than or equal to a is less than b, then a to the b is greater than b to the a. Can you modify this visualization to figure out what happens when both a and b are less than or equal to e? The first visual proof used slopes. Let's see one that utilizes areas instead. Again, start with two real numbers a less than b and imagine a is greater than or equal to e. Then graph the curve y equals a to the x divided by a minus one over the natural log of a. Because a is greater than or equal to e, this curve lies above the x-axis for all x values greater than or equal to one. Now plot the x-coordinate b over a, which is larger than one, and consider the area under the curve between x equals one and x equals b over a, which is a positive area because it lies above the x-axis. The area under the curve is given by the definite integral from one to b over a of a to the x divided by a minus one over the natural log of a dx. And as noted, this definite integral is greater than zero. When we apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to this definite integral, we see that a raised to the b over a divided by a times the natural log of a minus b divided by a times the natural log of a must be greater than zero. Because a times the natural log of a is a positive number since a is greater than or equal to e, we conclude that a to the b over a is greater than b. Raising both sides to the power of a, we obtain the fact that a to the b is greater than b to the a. So in this situation, when e is less than or equal to a is less than b, we again conclude that a to the b is greater than b to the a. I have the same question that I did in the previous visual proof. Can you see how to modify this diagram for the situation when a and b are both less than or equal to e? These two proofs rely on relatively elementary calculus techniques, but there's a bonus method that many people suggest you should use when trying to show that when a and b are both greater than or equal to e, then a to the b is greater than b to the a. The suggestion is to plot the function y equals x to the one over x. Then you can find the maximum of this function by figuring out where the derivative y prime is zero. It turns out this happens if and only if x equals e, as is shown here. You can also show that the derivative is less than zero when x is greater than e, and that means that this function y is decreasing when x is greater than e. Unfortunately, this technique requires you to know that y equals e to the one over x times natural log of x using exponential and logarithmic rules, and then requires you to use the chain rule and the product rule to determine that the derivative y prime is negative x to the one over x times the natural log of x, plus x to the one over x, all divided by x squared, a quite complicated derivative. But once you know these facts, the resulting computation isn't too difficult. Because a is less than b, and a maps to a to the one over a, and b maps to b to the one over b, and the function is decreasing, we see that a to the one over a is greater than b to the one over b. Raising both sides to the a times b, we see that a to the b is greater than b to the a. 
I find that third technique too complicated for the result involved. So the first visual proof used only slopes, and the second one really relied only on areas and an indefinite integral of a complicated function, but not too complicated. The visual proof using slopes was published in 1991 by Charles Gallant. The second proof using areas is more recent. It was discovered by Nasrul Haq in 2021 while he was a student at a university. Let me know in the comments which of these two visual proofs you like better, or perhaps you do prefer the more complicated standard approach. Also, remember the challenges to determine what happens when b is less than a is less than or equal to e. Can you modify the diagrams? And perhaps here's a more challenging problem. Can you say if a to the b or b to the a is larger when a is less than e and e is less than b? Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, check out my playlist on calculus or on inequalities.